The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Here's a little beauty from the guys at Odin Graphics and their debut title, Nords of Yesod. Yes, I know, some people say Yesod, but what the heck? Being a fan of Ultimate Play the Game's Underworld and Bubble Bus Software's Starquake, a couple of games which are also on the channel, I knew instantly that I was going to love this game. Your character, Charlemagne Charlie Fotheringham Groons, the apprentice saviour of the universe, has been asked to find the source of mysterious signals from the moon, which turn out to be a black monolith, a homage to the 1968 film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Charlie promptly volunteers for the task of going to the moon and finding the monolith. The game begins with you wandering about on the surface of the moon. As you amble along, try to avoid falling down the holes before finding a friendly mole. With mole in tow, leap down one of the holes and you will find yourself in a cavern with ledges and monsters, and more ledges and monsters. Most of the monsters are a nuisance, they merely get in your way rather than doing you harm, but they are quite fun to squash. Lower down, in each of the caverns, you find monsters of a different composition. They are not so easy to kill, and if you get too close, you will be thrown all over the place and lose energy. Monsters aside, it's best not to forget the main purpose of your mission, which is to find the monolith. To do this, you have to find and collect eight keys, or alchiums, so must explore the caverns and stay alive. The alchiums are rather attractive crystal objects, Indeed, it is so attractive that you are not the only one collecting them, so proceed with care if you don't want to become a victim of what could be the first lunar mugger. A mysterious red spaceman who will come after you if you get an Alchium and take one from you, so you want to keep some distance if you see him appear on the screen. At the bottom left of the screen there's a picture of you. Ah! Next to that is a window labelled Alchiums. To the right of that is your life meter with stroboscope and lives remaining from the three you start with. Finally, there's a timer. Nothing is said about an actual time limit in the instructions, however, but I'm assuming that time is limited. But if anybody knows, then please tell us in the comments section. Extra lives can be found scattered about the sublunar environment, which is just as well because on the bottom of the screen you can see your vital sign monitor, which very slowly ticks down. Your life force will ebb away, whilst your movements slow with every beating you take. The task is pretty simple, but is hugely complicated by the size of the cavern system. Not all of the access routes are clear, so you will have to use the mole to make extra tunnels. The mole isn't restricted by gravity like you are, so you are able to freely move him around the screen. He'll start knowing away at a wall automatically at an appropriate point, and the mole is also impervious to the attacks from the alien enemies that float around too, which makes him useful in keeping you from danger and clearing a path for you too. You can also use a stick if you pull down. These will act as a smart bomb and prevent any aliens from materialising for a little while, although it won't affect the perma-aliens. These are very useful, because not only do they render galactic muggers harmless, but also induce a gravity field in the immediate area, causing all monsters, if you can count a cuddly teddy on a spring as a monster, to fall to the bottom of the cavern. The game includes features such as whirlwinds that teleport you to somewhere that you would rather not be. Huge and deep shafts also exist, which can mean the certain loss of a life if you tumble down one. Unless you get very lucky and find that the one you just fell into has a very powerful updraft. The graphics were great for a game which came out in 1985, and these types of games were among some of my favourites back when I was a kid. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it really did have a similar vibe to Starquake, which was also a great game for its time. Not forgetting Underworld 2. The backdrops created an atmospheric vibe, and the soothing piece of music goes well with the game. 
The characters are eloquently defined and brilliantly animated with fantastic cartoon-like qualities. Even after all these years, I still haven't managed to complete this, even with trainers switched on. Maybe someday though, when I finally see the end of the game, I'll still revisit Charlie and the Mole every now and then. I thoroughly recommend this to anyone who hasn't played it yet, and if you're looking for a game to revisit, if you have, then I would suggest that Nords of Yesod will not disappoint. Thanks for watching guys, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and let me know your thoughts and memories of Nords of Yesod in the comments section. Maybe stick around, as we also check out the sequel, Ark of Yesod. Subscribe to the channel to be notified of any new videos, and to follow me on this fantastic journey down memory lane. There's loads of Commodore 64 games on the channel playlist already, but there's still many, many more to play through. It's an epic nostalgia trip, and I thank you for being part of this with me. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye for now.